With the 2017 Wonder Woman movie set to go into production in the next few months, reports have emerged that acclaimed cinematographer Hoyt Van Hoytma, who served as the director of photography for such films as Interstellar, The Fighter, and the upcoming James Bond film Spectre, has joined the crew. He joins director Patty Jenkins with a June 2017 release date on the books. Dennis, do you like the addition of Hoytma as the cinematographer for Wonder Woman? I think it's a fantastic choice, especially uh, he's most known for filling in for Wally Pfister, who went to go do uh, Transcendence. Because uh, he's, yeah, he's he usually does Chris Nolan's film. You know, a lot of directors usually have one or two cinematographers that they use, and Wally Pfister is like almost exclusively with Chris Nolan. But um, he filled in, and he did a great job. The reason why I like it so much is not only is he a great cinematographer, he did uh, Her, he did uh, Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy, he did a bunch of other films. Which is a really underrated movie, Yes, by the it way. is. Great film. And is that he, he seems to be able to adapt his style to the director and to the type of movie. So he doesn't have this one style. If you watch Her or you watch even the trailer for the upcoming Spectre, which like it kind of more mimics Sam Mendes' style that he had with Roger Deakins for uh, Skyfall. Right. So I think someone with like Patty Jenkins who she hasn't done, uh, she did a bunch of TV after she did right. Monster. Yeah. Uh, I think having someone that that's that adaptable and uh, that can collaborate, I think would work well with, with her. Amy Rose? Yeah, couldn't agree more. I mean, this film is shaping up in a really good way. I know when it was first cast, we're like, okay, we'll see. Wonder Woman being on screen made me extremely excited. But I gotta tell you, after seeing Gal Gadot in Batman v Superman, just a little bit. I'm I'm a believer now. I really am. I think in this universe she's going to perform. And getting a world class cinematographer like this to really shape the sequence and make the time period come alive is what you need. I think you nailed it because you look at Wally Fister's resume and he's really good at the budgers. I love him, mm -hmm. granted. And I'm not gonna give up on him because of the one dud of his directorial efforts. I still think he has talent. But I mean Hoyt, great name, by the way. He looks like he's from Game of Thrones in that picture as well. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but I just think this is exactly what you need. Regardless of a smaller budget or a larger budget, he really knows how to make the atmosphere come alive, and that's what you want for a film like this. So I'm really excited about it. One of the things that we've, we've seen in, in uh, Hoyt of the House Hoytma is that <laughs> you know he can do the intimate. It a, a lot of people think when they think of a good cinematographer, they think of how well they do the big grand sweeping mm. shots. Find me a cinematographer who is really good at bringing the close, intimate scenes to life. And you got a winner. You mentioned Tinker Tailor, Soldier Spy, mm -hmm. Her, things like that. So we see that in, in those types of things. You see him work with a visual effects heavy kind of situation in Interstellar and make it, you know, contribute to making it feeling sweeping and epic and all that kind of stuff. You're right. He's flexible. He's adaptable. He can do a lot of different things. And as Amy Rose pointed out, a lot of us forget that this is going to be somewhat a period piece, at least in some parts of the movie, the ability to bring different, you know, uh, sensibilities to those different eras and different scenes is something he's going to be really good at. I'm going to reserve how totally excited I'll be about it until I see Spectre, because that's that's a different kind of film than we see in his resume. But the trailers visually, like even those shots when Bond's in the balcony and how they shoot that shot looking down on that table below. Chris off. <laughs> yeah, very impressive stuff. So that could just send my enthusiasm right through the roof. I think this is a great move. Yeah, I think he's a great cinematographer. When you look at his body of work so far, uh, what I see that binds everything together is in camera. Uh, all of his work, her, Interstellar, even right to, uh, what's the other one, uh, Spectre, which we haven't seen yet, but from the clips that we've seen, all the directors also like to have in camera, like not a lot of special effects, not we're going to fill all that in with green screen. A lot of it's just shot right there. And I think his ability to capture that is what's so strong about his cinematography. So I'm wondering if they're going to do that in Wonder Woman, if they're going to use a lot of in camera um you know, not a lot of special effects to to capture World War One. I. I know they just started scouting locations where they're going to shoot. You know, actually in locations that were used in World War One for real. So I'm excited about the their choice of uh, cinematographer for this. 